Welcome to Melt University's 2020 summer program. This year, our virtual intern program will help you build your brand, inform you on a variety of career paths, and introduce you to top executives in sports and marketing. Here's your host, president and CEO of Melt, one of the largest independent sports and event marketing agencies in the country, Vince Thompson. Welcome students. Summer 2020 virtual Melt University, we are rolling on. We have had so many great, tremendous podcasts, so many tremendous guests, uh, so much enlightenment, you know, so much attitude, enthusiasm. Um, I hope that you are enjoying uh, these podcasts uh, as much as, as I've been enjoying them, and I hope you're learning um, as much uh, from them, from some of the, the, the greatest leaders, and I hope you're reposting it, and um, it's just <clears throat> it's just been so much fun, and, and today... Uh, we have a very, very special guest, Mark Chardy. It spells C-I-A-R-D-I because you're going to want to look up um, this gentleman. Um, not only is he just a dear personal friend of mine, become a very dear friend of mine, mentor, advisor, uh, lamentor. Um, you know, we, we, so he's an entrepreneur. But, you know, when you hear the moniker, famous Hollywood producer, uh, you got to look up uh, Mark Charty. This, 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 this guy uh, has produced some of my uh, favorite movies, some of my favorite sports movies. My, I think my favorite uh, still remains uh, Secretariat, um, you know, Invincible, Million Dollar Arm, which was shot <clears throat> in my town, the A-Town, uh, Atlanta. Um, our friendship is, a, is, a, is one of serendipity one of, of, of talking, one of, of, of networking, one of relationship. Um, it, it's, a, it's a great story, become dear friends. It's also his story is one about in the spirit of, you know, life's not linear, uh, pursuing your passion. Uh, the path is your path. I mean, we're going to talk about that. We're going to unpack that uh, in, 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 in just a minute. But uh, um, again, the, the producer, of some of the most successful, you know, sports movies and Disney sports movies. But Prior to that, uh, Mark was an All-State high school pitcher, played collegiate baseball as a pitcher at the University of Maryland, go Terps, and was drafted by the Milwaukee Brewers, and, and by the way, in 1983, and I have Mark Charting's baseball card. It's one of my most prized and cherished possessions, and he made it all the way up to the show uh, as a uh, pitcher for the Brewers in 1987, and then... Uh, uh, serendipitously became, uh, moved to Hollywood, Beverly Hills, and got involved in the film business and uh, has just had enormous amount of success. It's also, we're going to talk about this today too. It's always fascinating to me how he finds these stories for his movies. And it's always, and it's always fascinating to how he convinces these people um, to tell their stories or sell their stories. So Mark, Mark, welcome to uh, virtual summer 2020 Melt University. It's a it's a delight to have my my friend on. How you doing, Vince? That was a, that was a long intro. You want to play that back for your wife because she might not recognize <laughs> that person. That uh, uh, but 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 t- tell us tell us um, you know because you're very humble and very modest. But but tell us all of the uh, the movies that you have produced in your career or at um, least many at least many of them that we may have heard of yeah sure i mean it started with um the rookie and uh the first year i went from a garage to a movie set back in 2000 99 2000 and uh you know i was lucky to get the my career kicked off about a story uh around a guy i played with in the minor leagues it just so happened that jim morris and i signed at the same time I happened wow. to be reading a little article in Sport <clears throat> Illustrated, and and uh, and couldn't believe this story about a teacher, thirty five year old teacher from West Texas, who was pitching in AAA. And, and Sports Illustrated went on to start to describe the story, and then at the end, it said he played a little bit of minor league ball, signed in nineteen eighty three with the Brewers. And I'm like, wait, that's when I signed. And and I looked at the name again, and it was a, a guy that I remember one of the first guys I met in rookie ball in Paintsville, Kentucky, and we wow. played three, three years together. And, um, our, our, you know, I, I got lucky because I got a, a, my first start because Jim got hurt in Bristol, Tennessee, about two and a half weeks into the rookie ball season, 
I was probably close to getting released and ended up getting a spot start and I threw a shutout and that was it. Uh, I stayed in the starting rotation all the way through uh, my brief brief time in the big leagues, but um, you know had, had had you know obviously played with Jim for for a long time and and roomed with him one spring training. So, but you lose touch with these guys. But then you pick it up. Well, I hadn't talked to him in eleven years, and and uh, when when I then found this story, obviously got a hold of him, and and we got really lucky in getting the rights uh, with Disney, and that started my career uh, with Disney and 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 movies in general. Uh, sports films in general uh with that studio and had kind of a long run and continue to 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 make movies for them in fact i have another one coming out uh yeah. disney plus in september but that was the start of it you know but uh you want me to go through them real quick yeah yeah just because i i no, think no well, well, one thing for our listeners is that and our students is you know um the, the, we're, we're talking a lot about content we're talking about you know uh, you can make your own films. You can make your own movies. The world of content is continuing to evolve, yeah. and, you know, obviously. But but you know, they may have some spare time on their hands, or they may have already seen those movies with your fa- their families and go, yeah. wow, I'm listening to the guy that's responsible for those movies getting to the screen. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't set out when I when I thought about getting in the film business uh, to make sports movies. I, I got lucky with this particular movie, and then that set us on our path. And after that movie, I did Miracle. I, I did a little teen comedy called The New Guy, um, mm-hmm. which I shot uh, pretty much at the same time as The Rookie. And and uh, The Rookie came out first. That was my first movie. Then did Miracle, um, Invincible. Then did two movies with The Rock, The Game Plan and Tooth Fairy. And then did um, Secretariat, um, Million Dollar Arm, McFarland. Uh, then did a movie called Chappaquiddick. Uh, yes. I tried to get something as far away from sports films as possible and, and, and did that story, political drama, which and, I loved. Uh, thank you. And, and then did a teen, uh, kind of a YA novel called fallen. Then I did, um, a movie called miracle season about volleyball, a true story, uh, out of, out of, uh, um, Iowa. And then just finished a movie for Disney plus, uh, that we are looking at titles right now. It's either going to be all in. We're not. We're not sure of the title, but it's about a Clemson football player. Fantastic story. Yeah, we got a lot of Clemson students. Uh, his name was yeah. Ray Ray, right? Ray Ray McElrath Bay. He played in 2006, and it became a national story. He had, he adopted his little brother, who was going to go into foster care. Really amazing story, and it took 13 years for me to make that movie. And and you know you got it. You got to have uh, you got to have perseverance because these things are. You know, they take a long time. And, Thirteen uh, years. Wow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. So you. I, so you've also you've worked with uh, some of the great ones. You worked with Mark Wahlberg. You've worked with John Hamm. You worked with The Rock. You worked with Kevin Costner. Yeah. Um, and Wahlberg. so you. So you've worked with 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 them all, and and, and we'll get into that uh, in just a little bit because uh, you know they're 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 movie stars, and we tell our kids this, but they're still they're still just people as well. And uh, and and they have the same kind of wants and needs. But so. All right. So let's let's step it back. Obviously, you were one heck of an athlete in um, high school in New Jersey. Uh, So clearly you had a passion for sports and you obviously were a student athlete. We know there's a lot of uh, we talk to our students a lot about name, image and likeness uh, as well. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But but but. You had maybe an aspiration to be a professional baseball player, but you also knew it was important. You got your degree in, 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 in business administration, but how in the heck did you pivot from being a professional athlete into, you know, into, into being a, a quote unquote Hollywood uh, producer, like, you know, for the most vaunted, you know, company in the world, Disney, like, how did that happen? Yeah, you know, it just uh, again we w- the one thing I did have when I came out. Listen, I didn't start in the film business until I was thirty five, and and I didn't have any experience at all. And what I did have, which I was lucky, were friendships with guys in the film business. That some were agents, some were executives, some were writers, some were directors, and you know, I, w- I was friendly with a lot of these guys, and a lot of them were, you know, just kind of starting out or or in the beginnings of their career, and. But what I was able to do is get a, a call returned, right? And working out a garage, it, you, you, you got to hustle. 
and and we had to find really good projects. So so that you know, much like the rookie, you got to find if you find really good things that you're passionate about, then you, then you can go sell. You know, I, I was a marketing major, and and really didn't start using that degree until I had to sell films. So um, that's it. You got to be passionate. You got to you got to you know you got to be relentless, um, and you just got to jump in and and do it. Uh, I, I think if I look back and like how difficult. It, it, it was going to be. And, and, you know, in a way we were kind of these, this overnight success because we never worked for anybody, never, never mm-hmm. kind of came out of anybody's system. Just kind of, you, anybody can produce films. There's, there's no, there's no test you have to take. It's, it's, you know, you got to be able to, you know, set projects up, develop them. And a lot of times younger producers have to partner with, you know, kind of more established ones. And, and we just hustled and, and we're able to, you know, get the confidence of people, uh, at, at Disney, there was a friend, uh, Todd Garner, who was kind of co-head of production. So we were pitching, you know, president of production at Disney and got a couple things set up. And, and then that, after the rookie, we got a deal at Disney. Actually, Todd had gone over to another studio, Revolution, with mm-hmm. Joe Roth and started there. That's where we did the new guy. And then we did the rookie at Disney, Nina Jacobson. Uh, and, and she called and said, you know, we'd love to give you a deal. So we went over to Disney and, you know, I was there 12 years. And, uh, wow. And now uh, I left to go on my own about five, six years ago. And, and, and now with the advent of Disney Plus and all these streamers, now all that content has really uh, made the stories that I do very valuable, right? Mm-hmm. Theatrical was always tricky. Five years ago, it was like, okay, what, what's a theatrical movie? How do you get mo- people into a movie theater that's not a big tent pole or a horror film? You know, I'm in the kind of inspirational, dramatic kind of uh, space. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. now it's these you know, these, these platforms are absolutely perfect and, and my business has kind of taken off, you know? Well, you know, so you, you, you said a lot of things I want to impact. You, you talked about be passionate. You talked about be relentless. Uh, people ask me and people ask you, what do you do for a living? I say, I'm in the rejection business. I get told no all the oh, yeah. time. And, and, and we, and we say, you N-O know, is not the, didn't spell no, it's the first two letters of not yet, but but and in, in you're you're surrounded with rejection. You've got to a, a pursue and acquire a story. Then you've got to pursue and acquire somebody to help you fund the production or the telling of that story. And then that may be simultaneously with actors or actresses that you're trying to secure. And and what we tell our kids is, you know, hey, it's not a question of of of, of, of if you're going to get thrown off the saddle. It's a question of when you're going to get thrown off that saddle and it's and it's not that you're going to get thrown off saddle it's how you handle that but but i can imagine and you and i haven't talked about this but i can imagine you've been told no like like 10 million times yeah it's you know it's mostly no's right it's it's when you get a yes it's surprising but you know it's it's uh you you you've got to pitch stuff now early on in my career i probably pitched a lot more because you get excited about everything because by the way every story that i've been involved with or not been involved with, uh, they're all great stories. You would, you wouldn't have somebody try to present a movie to you or you find a movie idea, but you got to figure out what a studio or a financier is going to, going to respond to and what, you know, so you have to be, you have, you, you have to put both hats on, right. The, the, the selling hat and the buying hat. And, and now I'm a lot less, you know, I, I know what they're going to say most of the time. You know, I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not surprised typically. And, you know, through this whole COVID thing, I think I've set up like four or five different projects, you know, because we had really good books or ideas and, and, uh, we didn't use this time to just do nothing. And I kind of re- reloaded on a lot of my development in a, in a great way. And, and again, all these platforms, you know, were kind of perfect Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Disney plus, you know, now HBO max. So you got five real and even Apple, like six real players out there that are not studios in a traditional sense where it's like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Warner Brothers or Universal or Sony, you know, you're, you're, you're selling direct to consumer. So, uh, yeah, so you just you got to be really, really relentless. And uh, and, and you know, it's kind of like March of the Penguins. If you, anybody hasn't seen that documentary, uh, it's great because it's so much work getting these <laughs> penguins into the water and then you know kind of to adulthood it's it's like and it, it's perilous right. along the way and you got to remember too that they, these are like 30 million dollar investments you know that's what a movie the average movie costs in, in the world that i'm at 30 30 million dollars yeah and that's and now if there's marketing costs if it's a you know a theatrical distribution you're adding another 25 30 so it's a 60 million dollar investment so wow you know, you think of a movie, oh, you know, why don't they just do this movie? They're thinking in the same terms, what are they going to bet on? And, and 
usually they'll, you'll set up a movie and develop the script. And, and so you get part of the way there. And then, you know, it's hard enough to just set something up. Then, then you've got that maybe one in 30 chance of all the stuff they have in development becomes a movie. So it's really, wow. it's God's game, but listen, if, if you believe in yourself and you're good at what you do and, 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 you know, we created a niche, then, you know, people are going to want those stories. And, and, you know, I had to kind of wait out that whole, you know, domestic distribution to, you know, these digital platforms that that's what really transformed what I'm, what I'm doing and, uh, in a good way. So you got to just, you know, you got to look at these trends and, and, and figure out where, where your space is and, and what you're good at. But, and you, and, and I love that reference to the March of the Penguins. It's one of my favorite students, write that down and watch it. Cause there's a lot of life and professional lessons in that. But, but, you know, and you hear this term producer or executive producer and those types of things, it's a real <laughs> sexy uh, moniker, but I mean, it's really like your job is to direct and assemble the choir. Correct. Talk about yeah. talk about all the components that go into yeah. making uh, a movie because we got a lot of kids that are interested in the content space. I think it's since one a day or two ago, uh, the tools and the technology are there. Uh, but but to really really do it to the film festival level or the or the or the streaming level or something like that. I mean, it's like assembling a choir or symphony, right? It is. You know, I liken it to a chef. You know, in in a kitchen, you know, you're taking all the ingredients and you're putting them together. Everything starts with the producer. And by the way, it's the opposite of what you think. The produced by credit is better than the executive producer credit. And it's really? the reverse in TV, where the EP credit is bigger than the produced by credit. So it's it's a little misleading, but um, but the produced by credit is the biggest credit you can get on a film. Um, so. So that's it. You, it starts with you. You know, you got to you got to find the story. You got to find either either a script or or an article or a magazine article or or a book. There's a million ways to get a story. Life rights in a lot of ways are what you know where I find mine. Um, and then you got to go set it up. Sometimes you get a writer first, and then you go in and pitch a studio. That that's pretty much the ball the the, the game mm-hmm. plan with ninety percent of what I do. It's finding a story, finding maybe a writer and then going to pitch a studio. Right. Mm -hmm. And some of them are remakes at a, at a studio. I just set something up uh, at, at Disney of an old film. So, you know, it's just being smart about what you think and, and kind of having your ear to the ground, but uh, yeah, it's, it's assembling all the ingredients. And then once you, once 90% of what I, let's say 80% of what I do is, is developing. Right. Cause you, you know, you've got all these things in development and very few pop through to become movies. Right. Right. So you're developing all the time, multiple projects. You got to get that script to where then the studio will say, okay, put a director on it. And then you go from that point, you maybe work on the script a little more and then you wait for your green light and then you try to cast it and you got to get the budget at a certain level. And it's like all these things that what I like about producer, it's much more macro, right? And, and maybe with a little less talent, you, you can, you can succeed because I, I certainly can't be a writer. Though I can develop well, I'm not a director, but I, I know how to give notes and I and I understand, you know, what mm-hmm. makes it good or not. So it, it's more of a macro level, which I like. I'm involved from very start to the very finish through through release of something. So that that's what I've kind of uh, found that niche in. And I and I really love it um, and was able to develop my skills through trial and error. You know, it mm-hmm. uh, that's all it is. You got to read scripts. You got to know what's good. You got to be able to develop. That's that's the, the skill of a producer. And and honestly, you know, uh, or, or I think a really I mentioned this guy Todd Garner before. He he's got a great um, uh, podcast, and it's called uh, The Producer's Guide. And it's it's Todd Garner and Hollywood Hollywood's Elite. He's got probably. 50 episodes of some of the top people in town talking about from a producer's point of view, Mm -hmm. how it all works. It's the best podcast I've seen. And any students that want to get into film should download it, the producer's guide and listen to every single episode. Cause he he gets, again, this was the guy that used to be head of Disney. And then he went over to revolution studios and he's producer and he's produced lots and lots of movies, but it really does give uh, an overview of what a producer does and how the business works from a creative sense. Well, that and, and, and I was going to ask you that. So Todd Garner, the producer's guide, because there's so many career opportunities, um, you know, forget the famous actors and actresses and all this type of stuff. But behind the camera, I mean, you know, from the the, you know, the director to the, you know, the, the photographers, the film guys, you know, the people that, 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 that carry on the catering on the set, the makeup, the wardrobe, yeah. the 
um, you know, the 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 the, the, the writers, their directors. I mean, business affairs. You know, yeah, I mean, I mean, a thirty million dollar investment is a huge company. Yeah, for, yeah, for most people, and and uh, uh, so you know. And, and, and Mark, we hear a lot, you know, from our kids because they want to produce content. They want to get, um, you know, they want to get their stuff noticed. And obviously, um, you know, there are other quote unquote distribution outlets, maybe not to make a major motion picture, but, but, you know, on, uh, you know, YouTube and you see these people become overnight sensations and all that. But, uh, but there are, uh, there are, there, and, and, and what we say is the campus is the ultimate professional um, laboratory, but what what are some of the what are what are some of the areas where you see, particularly with where technology and the streaming and cord cutting this this sophistication as consumer, where do you see uh, the opportunities for uh, for future you know filmmakers? Well, you know, Vince, you and I talk about it a lot, right? Where where is everything going? And and uh, mm-hmm. I think it's really interesting to figure it out. I took a a chance because I uh, six years ago I looked and said, you know, listen. I, I see this theatrical model changing and they're making less and less movies, bigger and bigger tent poles to drive a lot of different you know things that studios have, consumer goods and everything else. And I'm like, that's kind of not my world. My movies aren't really foreign driven either. So I've, I've got to figure out a new way. And I just felt like the advent of Netflix and then Amazon, even though they weren't doing a lot of feature films, they were doing more series. I said, at some point, they're going to get into that feature film business and I want to be prepared for it. And that, that's what I did. I took a, you know, we, I was going into another deal at Disney and I left my partner. He stayed at Disney and, and I, you know, went on my own. And it was the best thing I ever did because I prepared myself over the last six years mm-hmm. to becoming kind of an independent, you know, kind of uh, producer where I could do a lot more than just the creative side. I could deliver a movie on the business side. And really for like Netflix, that's what they want. They want, they want to, they're, they're investing in a, in a producer that they feel can deliver a movie to them. They don't mm-hmm. oversee it. They don't, they don't do what Disney does. They, you don't have like the whole company working on every aspect. They expect the producers to do a lot of it. So you have to be prepared on that, you know, on that front. But, uh, but as far as different content, it doesn't have to be a feature film. Uh, you know, if you take a pyramid, you know, you would think that feature films are the most, you know, kind of the highest thing and the most lofty thing that you can kind of go for. And it, and it probably is, but there's very few films in relation to every, all the other content. There's TV underneath, there's series, you know, all the thing on, on these platforms are amazing, amazing series. You know, I'm trying to get more into TV myself, but I've kind of, I'm, 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 I'm a feature you know, film producer more than anything, but you know, then there's documentaries and there's now podcasts and there's like every, it, it's, it's just, direct to consumers has become really easy now and, and you're taking out a lot of that distribution cost and, and 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 everything that went along with it where people can just set up things you know a lot easier you know directors can can make little short films on an iphone i mean there's 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 way more mm-hmm. there's less barriers to entry on all fronts and you just got to figure out what what makes sense for you and and how you want to get in it what kind of chances do you want to make? I mean, it's a hard business to get into and that it's very insular and, and you've got to know people and it's very competitive and everybody coming out of even Ivy League schools want to be in a mailroom, right? So it's tough. Yeah, it's it's tough. Yeah. how do you get in there, right? How do you do it? How do you start your career? So, you know, you got to find your own path as, as, as you know, students and then, you know, kind of if you want to make a career out of it. Mm-hmm. Well, and here's another thing too. Um, uh, one in, in the title of my book is Building Brand New, uh, we're talking about how competitive jobs in the content and marketing and events and sports world um, is going to be uh, going forward in a post-COVID world. There's going to be, you know, tough job market because I'm seeing what I'm seeing a lot, Mark, is that people who are out of work now with good experience are willing to take a lesser job for a lesser salary to get back in the workforce. And it's going to put a hard squeeze on the on the entry level job market. But in the spirit of a brand building, you don't think about, you know, movies being their own individual brand, just no different than Coke or Apple. But but what if somebody tracks you down and reaches out to you? What what gets Mark Charty's attention in the spirit of how um, they they reach out to you? What 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 say if, whether it's on LinkedIn or they track you down via email or or they hear about you shooting a movie in Atlanta? What gets your attention in the spirit of brands? Because you are a brand and content expert, and that's what kids have to you know, understand listening to this podcast. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that you've 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 got to f- read as much as you can. I'd get the Sports Business Journal. I would right. try to read, you know, the trades, you know, either Deadline, Variety. You know, you can just read Deadline. A lot of this stuff you don't even have to pay for. I think Sports Business Journal you do, but you got to right. make investments to figure out, you know, trends. I remember when I got in the business, I, I would just read Variety every day from back to cover, just so I could get an idea of the business in general. Because I, I can't. I, started from nothing. I'm, I answered my first call in my life when I was 35. You know, I was like nervous and I'd never worked for anybody and, mm-hmm. and uh, never worked for myself in that sense. So, so you just got to figure it out and, and finding content and then get relationships, you know, get other young kids that, that are trying to do what you're doing or, you know, are, are creative, you know, whether it's your, your own school that you're coming from might have, alums that are in the business that's probably the best thing whatever college you went to find out the alum networks right so you know like you vince a lot of people probably from auburn mm-hmm. contact you they know what you've done a lot of people from maryland university of maryland have come by and and you know ask me for advice or you know they've been an intern or something you know there's only only so much i can do but i do give advice mm-hmm. because you know also my advice is like you got to figure out your own path you know you got to you know here's what i did you know, you, you got to get in the game somehow and, and get it going and, 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 uh, and just start working and finding that it's kind of like a water coming down a, you know, a stream, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, there's, there's no straight path at all, especially in this business. And it changes. Mm-hmm. It's, it just had seismic changes in the last few years. Um, last few, last few days. <laughs> yeah, no, it really is. I mean, Crazy. it's, uh, it, <laughs> that's it. It's changing by the day and you got to hang on because if you're not ready for it, uh, it, it's, <laughs> it doesn't get easier. You know? Yeah. It well, yeah. Well, it, it, and you just hit on a couple of things I want to unpack. Um, we tell our students all the time that the lowest hanging fruit is the alumni of the institution of which you attended. So, you know, chances are you're reading university of Maryland periodicals. If you went to Maryland or Auburn or wherever you've read about, uh, Mark in these things and, 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 and you can figure out a way to contact him. And then you have that emotional connection to what we call warming up and softening up the target. And we tell the students over and over again, study the alumni at the respective university yeah. that you went to, because you're going to automatically have that emotional connection. And the, the other thing that you, that you talked about is, is that um, uh, you cannot be, afraid to fail. You cannot be afraid to take the word no. And and Mark, one thing I wish I had learned early on in my career, and you probably would say the same thing, is that you can't ever take a rejection or a no personal because you never know what went into that decision. But you yeah. just got to get back up and plow forward. I mean, yeah. it's easy for creative people like myself and you to take these no's personal, but tell our kids about the importance of this. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, you could have, you could get 10 yeses and then the 11th no kills your project and work it all the way up the system. So it's, I think you got, you know, for me, it's, it's getting relationships with executives that I'm pitching, knowing what they can sell because you're in it together. They want to sell something and get a movie Mm -hmm. going with you because that's then their movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, you just got to get a sense. I always ask whether it's Netflix, what are you guys looking for? What's, what's, what is shifted? What is because it, it changes by the month, right? It could be, hey, we need young adult stuff. Now we need female skewing stuff. Now we need, you know, so those needs change all the time. You got you got to be proactive rather than reactive. That's that's the thing as well, mm-hmm. and and believe in the stuff that you go after because you got to live with it. It's years in the making. Mm-hmm. Again, I have three projects this year that I think I made the one, the Clemson one. There's two other ones. I have the, I have the birth of the UFC, the, uh, the Gracie's that came over, Jorge and Gracie. Uh, I've got his movie that's finally going to go on Hulu uh, shortly. We're about to put a director on that. And then I have another project that I've been trying to get going that looks like it might happen independently about this guy, Mike Flint, 59-year-old linebacker, who came back and played his senior year of college football 13 years ago. I've had three of these filmed 13 years, and I'm close to getting all three made. I've made one of them. Wow. Two to go. 13 years. I mean, that's that's a that's a long time. And you just and can't give up because some of these things are just timing. You know? I mean, it, is, it is truly is a mayor. I mean, that's amazing. 13 years. And so you, you've got it. You've got another one you picked up with the uh, the goalie, right? Uh, with, with, uh, did I read something about that? Um, 
Oh yeah, that's uh, yeah. I'm probably less active in that one. I think it's John Scott. He was a an enforcer that uh, that became uh, you know as as a joke uh, through a Canadian podcast. He got the biggest. He was the biggest vote getter in the All Star game. Uh, right. I think that's what you were referring to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So all right, so 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 so. But your bottom line is patience, persistence, perseverance. Yeah. Just keep the grind going. And so well, this is fascinating. We could talk all day, but 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 uh, a couple of things you mentioned, uh, Todd Garner, uh, you mentioned Sports Business Journal, you mentioned Deadline and Variety, which are the Hollywood trades. And what we also yeah. what I talk about is I get a lot of new business leads by looking through an article and then seeing who's quoted in that article. So yeah, I'm not only informed, but I'm also cherry picking that. What right. are some are you what are, what are some other go to yeah, I would say, uh, books and podcasts. Yeah, well, I'd say, well, I'd say Sports Illustrated. I would say, you know, Bleacher Report. You know, I'd listen to Bill Simmons. You know, I, I try to get information from everywhere. You know, and just, by the way, the internet. Like, anything that happens, ESPN.com, find out what's going on, what stories are happening. But find the little ones, right? I always found out that I'm not, I'm not going to compete with the big guys on a big Bingo. competitive book or, or thing. I got to go find something and create value. You know, I always look at, like, hidden figures – uh, as a great example of a story that's been right under everybody's nose forever, you know, no one knew that story, and and you find these mm-hmm. these these great unknown stories, you got to unearth them. You know, they're out there. There's a million stories. You know, I've got I've got a couple that I can't really talk about that I that that are I think unbelievable, and they got to be timely, right? And and then there's a lot of stories now that have to be about diversity because mm-hmm. they were neglected for so long, and now this correction has happened where you know it, there there needs to be something different right. about it, you know? Right. And so, you know, I've found just great stories and, and, and partner with really great people. So you got to build your network, man, get, get your network going, get, get those relationships. And, and, uh, and that's how you can succeed because you'll always have those to build on. And over the years, you know, now there's no one I can't call because I've probably touched everybody from people running agencies and networks to, and I don't call them a lot, but when, when I call them, I can get a, a phone call returned and, and, uh, you know, I've always been kind to people as well. That's another mm-hmm. thing, mm-hmm. man. If you're, if you're an asshole, you're not going to get far. No. I mean, you might get far a little bit, but that, that gets around, you know, whether you're a writer a director, a producer, people ask about you. They, I, it's funny. I I'm doing a, my first project with Netflix and, and I found out that they were calling around about me to find out, you know, what mm-hmm. it's like to work with me. And, you know, I just had the confidence that, Hey, that's going to come back, you know, really well. So again, it's mm-hmm. like, you know, these are big, big investments that people are, you know, kind of uh, counting on you to, to be able to execute. Well, you, 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 God, you're hitting on so many points that, 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 that we talk to our students about is that the value of not only the value of the relationships and networking, but the value of nurturing that relationship all the time. It's almost like a plant or a flower. You've got to water it and grow it and trim it and prune it and get it sunlight yeah. and all that. You cannot be you know, you can't be, uh, you can't be a jerk because, you know, my old man, you know, would say the, the world turns around 24 seven and now it's 24 minutes and seven seconds, not 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, it moves and, and, and fast. And, and, and that person that you may have mistreated, uh, at, at, at any given moment can wind up in a position. And, 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 and by the way, I'm the, I'm the poster child for, for this. I've had to, you know, learn that myself over time. Um, but, but, but you just, you just nailed you've made so many great points today. And, 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 and I, I, I couldn't, uh, leave you today. I couldn't close without, you've got to have so many great stories yourself of working on these, these films, acquiring these stories, working with all these famous actors and actresses. And, you know, we've, you know, we've read so much about the rock and all, and, you know, and Mark Wahlberg is, is a hugely successful businessman. But do you have any any favorite stories, favorite actors that stick out that our students might enjoy and relate to? Um, that I can tell? That you can tell that won't, uh, no, that won't get me and you in trouble. You know what? What I've noticed with, with all the movies that I've done, whether it's, you know, starting with uh, Dennis Quaid, Kurt Russell, you know, Wahlberg, the rock, all, all these guys really, really wanted to be, were excited and passionate about the movies. It, was, it wasn't, it wasn't a payday for them. They were really connected to the material and it makes such a, a different, a difference in, in performance. Um, but I had great experiences with everyone. 
uh, they, they were all really gracious and, and, and really worked hard. Uh, and, and listen, the set is it, movies are the most unglamorous thing in the world. There, there's nothing. It really kind of, is. Is it not? Yeah, it's it's for me, it's like usually a two to two to 13 year process. But when you get on a set, you're there with 300 people and, you know, the actors are one part of it. They're brought out to the set. You got to light, you got to sit there, you got to stand there, you got to wait, you got to bring the double in, you got to bring the actor back. And then they say their lines over and over and over again. Then they come back. Anybody visiting a set, it's really exciting for the first hour. And then then you're looking at your watch. Then you're asking what time lunch is. And then you're like, hey, you know what? I'm probably going to take off in a little bit. It's funny how that works. Uh, but it's, yeah, it, it's a whole process. The only thing glamorous are the, are the premieres, which are really, um, you know, it's funny because it's, you know, you think that that's what it's all about, but, but it's hard work and, it, and it's a, you know, it's just a long process. You know, typically it's one year from the time you start prep. Typically I, I, it's my movies are three months prep, three months to shoot, six months to edit and, and get to wow. it. So, and that's, you know, and then you act, add in development time and, you know, wh- when they're going to release in the schedule, you know, it's, it's, it could be two, three, four years. So, um, yeah, it de- it depends. It's a long process. Got to got to be patient, and you got to get enough things in development that you're passionate about, where you can be making multiple things. You know, I, I, I did, well, you just said something too. Like I did, I I, I didn't think about it. Three hundred different people at any given time can be on a movie set. Yeah, when the set's up and going, it starts small. It's smart. It starts with a producer, then it's a producer and a writer in a studio, and then you bring in a director, and then you you bring in a line producer, which is your guy that's going to budget the script you start doing your location scouting you're doing budgets 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 you start to get your keys in your departments your dp your production designer your art director wow your editor all those things you start building outwards and then once you start prepping and get toward the movie once you're like two three weeks out that's when everybody starts coming in you have construction production design gaffing light all that stuff and and when you the whole there's just like two three hundred people on average when yeah. the movie at its height, and then when you start scaling it back, it goes back down, and then you have your post people and your editors and your you know kind of post production, and it gets small again. And the d- director stays with you. By the time you you know you're in the cockpit with the director when when you bring him on, but you know sometimes that's not for years when you get close to a project. All right now, I'm I'm such a nerd. I always watch the credits after even like a something on HBO or some, something like on Netflix. And I mean, I'm like, man, I'm like amazed yeah, count at this gigantic uh, choir. Uh, yeah. And, you know, uh, sometimes I don't even know what any of them, some of them mean. Um, and and, and, credited, right. Your PAs aren't credited. You know, sometimes I know. a lot of other people that might help with a movie or people in our office or whatever. That's the big thing is getting people's name up there. It's been important for me to get my guys in there and protect a credit. And, um, so now I've been able to do that, but, uh, it takes a while. You I know? mean, it, it, it literally takes a village to, to, to make a movie. This has been, yeah. this has been so fascinating. Um, and you and I could talk on all day about this cause I just, I love, you know, the stories you got. Uh, I love, obviously I'm a big fan of, 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 of all your movies and, you know, to our listeners and our, and our students uh, you know, actually had one out reach out uh, a day or two ago yesterday from University of Georgia and started making some films on campus and networked to, to with me through my son to Mark and and uh, and I mean it's just amazing some of the stories and opportunities but 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 this has been so unique to really learn and know what really goes behind on behind the scenes that you know some of the greatest films to me and the that have ever been shot particularly in the sports space and 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 again. Uh, you know, Mark, um, you know, such a great delight for you to share your, your wit and wisdom uh, with our students of, um, uh, of Melt University. You know, we've been delighted. We've been surprised. You know, when all the COVID hit, we had 40 kids coming in and we're like, you know, let's make some lemonades here. We're going to take this thing virtual. Uh, you may not have been able to come in to teach our 40 kids, but now you're going to be able to uh, reach and preach and teach to, you know, hundreds of kids in this, in this program. And uh, it's really kind of been a, a great blessing in disguise because we're exposing them to the greats like yourself. We're exposing them to, uh, you know, they may not have ever thought about, you know, Hey, how do I break into the making movies? Not forget being the actress or the actor, the star and all that. But uh, so you, you know, so you know, Mark Charty, uh, president, CEO, uh, select films, uh, some of the greatest uh stories and sports stories some great ones coming up 
Uh, you know, and then obviously think of the career path from, you know, great pitcher in high school and college, made it all the way to the to the to the to the show, to the big show, uh, and then uh, go from, you know, career in professional baseball to uh, to Hollywood, Hollywood producer and, 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 and many, many, you know, many, many hats and sharing those stories with us. So we really appreciate um, your time and your wit and your wisdom. And I'm sure you're going to get a lot of feedback. So thank you so much, Mark, for joining us. Appreciate it. It's all about content. That's all about. about content. Content is king. All right. So thank, Mark Charney, thank you. You got it. See you, Vince. Summer 2020. Melt University Virtual. We roll on. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Vince. Hope you enjoyed today's virtual class. We'll be back soon with another edition of Melt University 2020.